Hi everyone. One day my son approached me when I was sitting on the couch with his story saying, Hey mom, I want, I want, I want. I hugged him and he said to me, Please help me say my words quickly. Having a son who stuttered pushed me today to speak about stuttering. Some of you may have the experience to speak with people who are stuttering I'll give you more in-depth information. Some of you may have not. I'll maybe inform you about this speech disorder. My son has a moderate stuttering for three years. Since then, I have been searching the best ways to learn about this speech disorder, how to help my son and understand him and communicate with him. I have read many books, searched several web websites for the past three years. So today, I will inform you about this speech disorder, types and symptoms, causes and risk factors, treatment, and communication. So, what is stuttering? Stuttering is a speech disorder in which sounds, syllables, words are repeated or prolonged that will create a disruption to the flow of the speech. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services in its National Institute of Health website, stuttering affects about 5 to 10 percent of all kids at some point, most occurring between the ages 2 to 6. What types of stuttering we have? We have three types of stuttering. We have the repetition one, blocking and assertion. Repetition, repeating sounds, syllables or words. Blocking, in which the stuttering person is blocked from saying the word or blocked at the beginning sound of the word itself. Repetition, stuttering people are repeating, uh, are inserting uh, sounds such as mm, ah, in their speech more than one time. What types of symptoms can we see on those people? We have two types of symptoms. We have the physical one and we have also the emotional one. The physical one, is mainly a struggling behavior. We can see it on the face, such as blinking eye or ex um, facial tics, uh, refusal to speak with people, or hesitation when he can't convey his messages. Emotional one, frustration when he can't convey his messages to the people they are communicating with him, as we can see in the image presented on the screen. In the United States of America, one in seven people speak a language other than their home language in their houses. I think that will bring a question to your mind. Does speaking to my child with a language other than his home language trigger stuttering for him? Well, the good news is that no evidence has been found up till now that suggests that speaking to a child with another language other than his home language creates stuttering. So we can let our kids learn another language. We have just defined stuttering types and symptoms. Let's move now to the causes and risk factors. Now, the causes are believed to be three types of causes, developmental, neurogenic, and psychological. Developmental, when the children are learning their language, the language skills are not well developed, that will trigger stuttering for them. And neurogenic, when the signals in the brains are not connected with the nerves and muscles that are responsible for speech that will also create stuttering. Now the psychological factors used to be believed that uh, such as anxiety, low self-esteem, nervousness trigger uh, stuttering. It can't trigger stuttering as the research say but it may worsen the situation with people who are stuttering. The risk factors that can maybe um, contribute to stuttering for a long time are time, age, and sex. Time, since stuttering has started. Kids who are stuttering for more than one year are more likely to continue when they grow up. Age, kids who are starting, uh, who, who have started to stutter before three years and a half of age are less likely to stutter when they grow up. Gender, boys are believed to be four to five times more likely to stutter than girls, as we can see in the statistic shown on the screen. Now, if 
stuttering proceeds with the children more than six months, we need to see treatment. What options do we have for treatment? We have two options for treatment, fluency shaping therapy and electronic devices. Fluency shaping therapy is also two branches, speech rate control and breathing control. Speech rate control, speech therapists may be practiced with children how to uh, say slow words, small sentences in a fluent speech. By time, they can, make say, they can say longer sentences fluently. We have the breathing control method. They teach children how to control their breathing and regulate it while they say longer sentences. We have also the electronic devices in which these devices are um, worn with children, something like hearing aid, but it can trigger background noise that believed to help stuttering. Now we all know that stuttering can be cured, but what are the best way to communicate with people who are stuttering? It's very important for all of us to know that stuttering people are interested in communicating with us as we normally communicate. So bear in mind two points. The focus should be on the message rather than on the utterance or the sounds. And it's very important for you to give him a sense of patience. Don't fill the gaps. Don't tell him how to relax. As we can see in the image presented, we can see 66% helps when we can't intervene or maybe give him a sense of patience. Now I have divine stuttering, types and symptoms, causes and risk factors, and treatment and communication. Up till now, I can't forget that moment when my son came to me. I hugged him and we were able to read that story. But our battle with stuttering has then started.